All right, so now we're ready to set up PCRs. So these are PCR tubes, not to be confused with Eppendorf tubes. The only difference is our, these tubes are much smaller, um, and that's about it. They're thinner walled, too. We're only going to use one of them. You can just break them off if you want and put it into a rack like that. Similarly, we will need one cap, so I'll go ahead and pop off a cap and hold on to that. So we're going to label this. What's the name of our first PCR reaction? Does it have a name? Um, Let's just call it PCR for now. Well, it's for the CRTE genes. Okay, CRTE. Um, yes. So when you do this with a whole strip of them, they have a position A through H. So it's easier just to write down A corresponds to this and just do that all in a spreadsheet and then you don't have to read the labels. You just know it's, the, it's lane A. You just need to know which orientation it's in. So like, if this was our whole strip, you could label it like A, B, C. And even if you can't read your handwriting, you know you labeled it A through H, and you labeled it on one side, so it goes like that, and it's A through H. And there's no ambiguity about what is what. Okay, so we have our tube here. And then I've gone ahead and copied down from the wiki the protocol for a fusion-based PCR. So everything is going to go like this. I didn't write down the water. 31.5 microliters good water. All right. So you're going to take this and go down. And always add your enzymes last when you're setting up uh, an enzymatic reaction. So 31.5 microliters of water. Okay. And then five microliters of DNTP. So these are two millimolar in each DNTP. Uh, you'll find you, you can get DNTPs in any concentration. So you'll very often see them at 10 millimolar. Mm -hmm. You'll also see them at 50 millimolar, I believe. Um, make sure that you're using the right concentration that your protocol is based on. And this protocol is based on two millimolar, so that's what I got. Okay, so five microliters of that. Okay, and then 10 microliters of fusion. Okay, and then one microliter of your two oligos. That's the first oligo. Here's the second oligo. And then the template. We use one microliter of that as well. Okay, so now the very last step is fusion, half a microliter. So that is this blue capped guy. So I'm, this is a freezer rack. You notice I'm leaving it in the freezer rack. I'm not taking the enzymes out and putting it here. Also, as soon as I'm done with working, this freezer rack goes back in the freezer. Your enzymes need to stay constantly cold. So I'm also I'm not touching the bottom. I'm not letting it warm up. Take out your half microliter, put it back, and then dispense. Okay, 
and then tap it. Now the most important thing with any molecular biology reaction is to mix it well. Don't assume it's going to mix spontaneously. At these small volumes, things don't like to mix. So you have to kind of be forceful about it. Um, and I like to invert it and tap it. And you can also vortex it, but I actually find this more effective. And then you can human centrifuge it, and it's ready to go on the thermocycler.